Welcome to class. Today we'll talk about Agaricus production. Here is a box of button mushroom that we produced in one of our previous class. Note that the white or cream color button mushroom Agaricus by Spores, commonly found in salad bars and on pizza, is the same species as Cremini and Portobello. Cremini is the brown strain of Agaricus by Spores sold young like the button mushroom. Portobello is a cremini that is allowed to mature and grow to a full size. A, porto, a portobellini is a medium sized cremini. The wild type of agaricus by spores is naturally brown. The white or cream color button was found by chance on a mushroom farm in Pennsylvania about 100 years ago. This natural mutation became the mainstay of the industry. Not too many years ago, an oversized mature button mushroom was cold and thrown away. It wasn't until Chef popularized recipes with these mushrooms that Portobello became popular. Today, if you are a button mushroom grower, Portobello's probably make up part of your cells. Secondary composer. Um, so a Gigas by Spores is a secondary decomposer with growth climate very different than those of the primary decomposer like oyster and shiitake. Button mushroom use an organic substrate already decayed or composted by other organisms. And importantly, secondary composer consume the dead and dormant cells of many or of those organisms responsible for composting the substrate. Today, there are several types of growing systems used in the mushroom industry. The tray system, also called the California or Western system, rely on moving large, usually wooden trays which are around four feet by four feet by one feet tall of compost by forklift from one room to another. It's a two system zone since spawn running and cropping are carried out in its separate rooms. In the Eastern United States, a one zone system is used in building called the Pennsylvania double two, which is two long building connected side by side to optimize ventilation. Their spawn run and cropping are conducted in the same room on multiple tier shelf. That's why it's called a shelf system that runs the length of building. Compost is moved via conveyor belts and in and out of the room. In the Dutch system, compost is moved on nets pulled by winches to fill aluminum frame bed in growing room. This is the more modernized system. It's also a cleaner system. In Ireland and rarely in the US, plastic bags are used to grow crops. Another growing system. So in California, phase one, which we're gonna talk about later, is generally done outdoor. In some area of the world, urban sprawl have encroached upon the agricultural sector and older problem have caused grower to compost in enclosed structure called tunnels or silos. It's called bins or bunker if it's roofless. In places in the eastern United States and Canada, there are businesses that specialize in producing compost. So the mushroom grower simply place an order and a compost is delivered. In much of the US, each mushroom grower make his or own compost and makes just enough for their need. These structures are built with wooden slats in the floor so air blown through the helium can pass through the compost. The advantage of tunnels include better control over the composting process. Air is forced through the compost as needed to prevent anaerobic fermentation. It's space saving, there's little turning is required a reduced shrinkage and odor, better odor control. The wisdom of converting to tunnel composting is controversial though. 
I'm going to chat a little bit about the brief history of Agaris uh, production. I mentioned this briefly in the uh, first lecture, but Agaris production began in France in the 17th century on horse manure and moist leaf litter in waste bags. At that time, it was recognized that one manure heap could be inoculated with parts of another and a casing layer was used. The maker of these early mushroom beds knew that heat from the bed had to be dissipated for mushroom production. One can imagine how it was recognized that button mushroom grew on compost. How someone figured out that the casing layer was necessary to initiate fruiting is remarkable. In one of the most significant development in history of mushroom production, a French gardener began to cultivate mushroom in underground quarries near Paris. Later, the industry moved to above ground and closed building. The beginning of modern methods is developed. By the late 18th century, composting methods resemble the method used today. Horse manure was used intensively during the early years. While many people still believe that horse manure is part of growing mushroom, it isn't used much today. So when the automobile industry developed and horse became more pet than work animal, it was soon learned that horse manure was not essential to mushroom production. Manure manureless compost, also called synthetic compost, as opposed to horse manure compost, or just manure, were soon formalized. Around 1915, grower in the U.S. introduced a second stage of composting, then called sweating out, today called phase two pasteurization or peak heat. The significance of this step was first systemically explored in 1930 by Lambert at Pennsylvania State. In the early four, 1940s, researchers Sinden and Hauser, also at Pennsylvania, increased the efficiency of composting. The first part of composting, called Phase 1, was conducted as is now in piles called Rick and was reduced to about two weeks. Other significant changes in the industry include optimizing the use of grain spawn in the 1950s and supplementing compost at spawning with delay release nutrients such as oil encapsulated in the nature protein coat in the 1970s by Carroll and Schneisler, who patented the method for Pennsylvania State University. One such supplement is called SpawnMate. Do not confuse this supplementation with supplements added to compost during phase one. As we will see, a compost pile is one of the most complex ecosystems on the planet. In button mushroom industry, straw is principally is, is the principal ingredient in compost. The straw is nutrient poor so it's supplemented with various other agricultural waste products like dry poultry waste, DPW, cotton seed mill, CSM, and many other. The compost pile is managed very carefully, and the first part of composting, called phase one, is conducted in piles called ricks and is reduced to two weeks. The first part in making compost is the assemblage and conversion of raw material into nutritious medium or substrate for mushroom growth in phase one. This step usually occurs outdoor on a concrete or asphalt floor called a wharf. Composting result in a semi-selective substrate that allow the growth of button mushroom mycelium while excluding other microorganisms. The raw material of composting are primarily inexpensive agricultural byproducts or waste. During composting, certain physical qualities, permeability to air and water holding ability, and chemical process such as nutrient availability for the mushroom, the exhaustion of nutrient from competitor, and 
appropriate pH or develop. The heat generating property of compost are also removed by the end of uh, by the time the compost is spawned with button mushroom. Here in this picture we are chopping straw on a rough Straw either alone cause synthetic compost or as horse manure, a little horse manure in straw usually from racetrack bedding is the starting material of compost. It provides structure and chemical property. If horse manure is used, it's just a small fraction of the total compost. Horse manure in this context refers to straw with a little manure in it. Just what you would expect if you collect straw from bedding in a horse stall. The microorganism present presence in the manure jumpstart the composting process. That is why it, is, it was desirable but not always necessary. Straw contain about 0.6% nitrogen, while horse manure contain about 1% nitrogen. Straw provide carbohydrate, uh, roughly 36% cellulose, 20% Pentosin and 60% lignin to the compost. Cellulose and pentosin breaks down to simple sugar, which supplies energy to the microbe. Lignin is a highly resistant material and is found in wood. It is changed during compost to a nitrogen rich uh, lignin hummus complex, a source of protein for the button mushroom. Nitrogen rich lignin hummus complex is resistant to bacterial decomposition but not to mushroom enzyme. The substrate acquire some specificity because of this nitrogen rich lignin hummus complex. Researchers estimate that between 40 to 70 percent of the nitrogen utilized by mushroom comes from nitrogen bound in this lignin complex. So to make the straw more efficient for the production of mushroom, nitrogen supplement are added during composting. These supplements are designed to provide proteins in the form of nitrogen and carbohydrate sugar to feed the ever increasing microbial population. Many nitrogen sources can be used as long as sufficient carbohydrate are readily available to supply energy for the nitrogen utilization. Here, straw is being wet thoroughly and supplemented uh, with dry poultry waste and urea. Because of the tough nature of cellulose, many of the carbohydrate in straw are not initially usable and the energy comes from the supplement. A balanced supplement is therefore highly desirable. It should contain not only nitrogen but also sufficient organic matter to supply essential carbohydrate. For this reason, certain manure and animal feeds meal are widely used for composting. Scent composting is an alkaline process, acidic or sour supplement are not used. Here in this picture, uh, more supplement are added, uh, dry poultry waste, urea and cottonseed meal uh, all in equal proportion. Water is uh, added to uh, adjust the moisture to about 70 to 75 moisture uh, and the straw is mixed and formed into bricks. Common supplements include nitrogenous fertilizers such as ammonia sulfate uh, which is 21% in nitrogen, ammonium nitrate which is 26% in nitrogen and urea which is 46% in nitrogen for rapid burst of ammonia. And plant and animal products such as cotton seed meal, which is 6.5% nitrogen, cotton hull, which is 2.5% nitrogen, dry poultry waste, which is 4 to 5% nitrogen, sugar beet pulp, which is 1% nitrogen, and cotton seed hull, which is 1% nitrogen. Gypsum is an essential supplement in all compost. It is used to improve the physical structure of the compost by causing aggregation of colloidal particles which result in greater air space and greater water holding capacity. Gypsum also supply calcium for mushroom metabolism and counteract harmful high concentration of potassium, magnesium, and magnesium, preventing a greasy condition in the compost.
So there are two types of uh, decomposition. You have aerobic, uh, which decompose organic matter rapidly and completely with a corresponding production of carbon dioxide, water, and heat. Uh, thermogenesis, so it produces a lot of heat. And then you have anaerobic, which partially decompose organic matter, producing not only carbon dioxide and water, but also certain acid and several types of gas, such as hydrogen sulfide and methane. Anaerobic composition should be avoided since anaerobic generate less heat than aerobic. Anaerobic areas in compost smell like rotten eggs and uh, as waterlogged and are cooler than aerobic decomposition. Remember, you need high temperature to fix nitrogen uh, into the nitrogen-rich li lignin hummus complex. And to turn carbohydrate into more complex form, the browning that occur as the straw in the compost turn from yellow to brown. This also occur when the when you make brown caramel candy from white sugar on your stove. So ammonia, the production of ammonia is essential for composting process since ammonia supply nitrogen to microbial use. Ammonia is probably is produced by microbes acting upon the protein containing the supplement and is used by other microbes to form body tissue. A microbial succession is established with each new generation decomposing the remaining the remain of the previous one. This succession occurs because as the temperature in the compost warms up, one set of microorganisms is replaced by another set that tolerates the warmer temperature. This is repeated over and over during composting. But this thus this is highly a complex ecosystem. The heat, the heat produced by microbial action also fix a certain amount of the ammonia, forming a nitrogen-rich lignin hummus complex. Use ammonia volatilized into the air. The pH of the compost uh, increase as ammonia is produced, and the smell of ammonia is evident throughout phase one. So we're going to chat about the carbon-nitrogen ratio. So initially, nitrogen content is 1.5 to 1.7 at the initial makeup of the compost pile is desirable. The C to N ratio should be about 30 to 1, and a makeup at makeup and 20 to 1 at filling the filling tray or bed with phase one compost before phase two, and 17 to 1 at spawning. Too much nitrogen can result in prolonged ammonia release necessary necessitating longer composting time. If composting continues too long, the physical and nutritional qualities will be negatively affected. Too many carbohydrates will result in available carbohydrate that can become food for competitors. So succession of microorganisms. High quality compost is the result of aerobic fermentation involving a succession of microorganisms which precede the uh, essentially higher temperature chemical reaction. Simple soluble carbohydrates are used first and their carbon is lost as carbon dioxide or incorporated into the microbial biomass. Nitrogen also goes into the biomass, although some is volatilized uh, as ammonia. In the first three days, Mesophilic fungi and bacteria, such as mucor species and Pseudomonas species, are common, followed by other mesophilies, fungus such as Aspergillus. The mesophilic population is gradually succeeded by a thermophilic population, organism that thrives above 112 Fahrenheit. The fungus Humicola species and a bacterium called bacillus are important at temperature above 112. Actinomycetes, which are a type of bacteria, are very important in good compost. They are abundant in compost toward the end of phase one. All of these organisms are a key player in the compost pile. Uh, there are many, many others.
temperature, initially mesophyll or active under 90 Fahrenheit. Utilize available carbohydrates and nitrogen compound releasing ammonia. The ammonia is utilized by successive microbial population and the temperature rise. As temperature rise, thermophilic fungi, uh, actinomycetes and bacteria dominate the inside of the pile. Actinomycetes are visible as white flecks. And when temperature rise above 140 and especially above 165, Decomposition is primarily due to due to chemical reaction of humidification, forming the nitrogen-rich lignin humus complex, and caramelization process, which eliminate water from carbohydrate and darken the compost. Essentially, the formulation of substrates this substrate for mushroom growth. Some other characteristics of a compost during phase one are water and air. Moisture level in compost must range between 69 to 73% water. Too much water can result in anaerobic condition. Too little water result in cool compost and poor microbial growth. However, you need high temperature from aerobic com decomposition to fix nitrogen into the nitrogen rich lignin hummus complex and to turn carbohydrate into more complex form. So, characteristic characteristic of compost as filling. So, uh, before when you finish with you know step one, phase one, we're gonna start moving to phase two. So at the end of you know phase one, there should be a strong smell of ammonia. The nitrogen level is about 1.7 percent. The compost is lightly flecked throughout with whitish colonies of actinomycete, also called firefang. Uh, moisture content should be 60 to 70 percent. The pH is 8 to 8.5. The compost should be uniformly brown and when the compost is firmly squeezed, liquid will be appear between your finger but water should not run down, uh, run out of the compost. An undesirable part of all compost is the ash content. An undesirable part of the of all compost is the ash content. Non-compostable mineral like rocks. Level of ash should be as low, low as possible. So some characteristic of compost during phase one. Uh, this is the typical or at least theor theoretically composting schedule follow. There are many, many other possibilities, but basically on the first day, straw uh, is, you know, you break the straw, you chop it up, and you wet it thoroughly to reach a 70 to 75 cents moisture. You add dry poultry waste and urea mix. Soak for two and uh, one half days. Microbial quickly breaks down the waxy coating of the straw and the internal temperature rises. On day four, you add more dry poultry waste, more urea and cotton seed meal. These three in equal proportion. Water as needed and shape into ricks. Ricks dimension are rectangular by length by five to six feet in width and four to seven feet high. Any larger will result in an anaerobic condition. First, turn so the compost pile runs on oxygen in 48 to 96 hours and must be turned to prevent anaerobic uh, center. Add gypsum and water as needed, mix well. Thermophile, an organism that like high temperature, replace mesophile, mesophile uh, organism that likes moderate temperature, and temperature rises from 115 to 145 to 56. At, in, at temperature of 145 to 56, the straw soften and absorb water. In day nine, uh, you have a second run. You mix well, add water, and turn. Some time more supplement are added uh, to reduce the risk of fire. Maximum temperature in the closet 
or reach just prior uh, just prior to second turn. So 170 Fahrenheit is desirable, greater than 155 mixed uh, compost selective. 156 for at least three days works. A maximum temperature of 140 is too low. In day 11, you do a third turn, mix well and add water. Day 13, you do a fourth turn if necessary. And day 15, you be ready for fill. Implement temperature uh, or drop a little at this point. So where are we? We are on a button mushroom farm uh, on the mushroom uh, wharf. Straw, 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 and bell straw. So they use a lot of straw. The straw is being chopped up. And you add a lot of water. So composting requires a lot of water. Uh, straw is being wet thoroughly and supplemented uh, or added, such as dry poultry waste and urea. Let the six sit for two and two and a half days for the microbes to break down the waxy coating of straw and the internal temperature of rice. Add more supplements such as dry poultry waste, urea, and cottonseed uh, meal. These three is in equal proportion. Water is needed uh, to reach a 77% moisture. Uh, it's being mixed into the straw uh, to form the rick. So this this is basically a machine that that is mixing up the supplements uh, and the straw. Piles is formed into ricks with this machine, uh, rick dimension or rectangular, any length by five to six feet in width and four to seven feet high. Any higher will result in an anaerobic core. So this is a rick uh, at day seven uh, of composting. So we're gonna go on to phase two now. So phase one is completed. Phase one is completed at the end of phase one. There should be a strong smell of ammonia, the nitrogen level uh, is about 1.7 percent. The compost is slightly flecked throughout with whitish colony of actinomycetes, also called firefang. The moisture content is 67 to 70 percent. The pH is about 8 to 8.5. The compost should be uniformly brown, and when the compost is firmly squeezed, liquid appear between your finger, but water should not run out of the compost. Our compost is ready for filling, which is, which means loading it into trays, which are moved by forklift into a room dedicated for phase two, or if it's loaded onto shelf with the help of a conveyor belt in a room that will, for the next week or so, be used for phase two. While phase one is a combination of biological and chemical process, phase two is purely biological. Special room with controlled temperature, humidity, and fresh air produce the appropriate condition for a certain group of microorganisms. To use an exhaust relatively available carbohydrate and free ammonia, which must be completed, completely removed since ammonia is inhibitory to the world of button mushroom mycelium. The result is a buildup of microbes that contain vitamins, fats, and proteins. The mushroom mycelium will utilize this biomass, which constitute part of the brown layer on a partially decomposing straw fiber. So in this process, certain organisms are favored by a high temperature. At 100 to 170 Fahrenheit, many species of bacteria are active. Uh, above 130 Fahrenheit, bacteria dominate and are responsible for the ammonification. So ammonia is produced when bacteria break down nitrogen-containing organic compounds. That occur at this temperature. 
So at 115 to 140, Latino mice eats and, uh, and other other uh, organism are common. At 110 to 130 Fahrenheit, uh, fungi such as humi- humicola and torula are common. These fungi are more efficient at de uh or remove ammonia from the substrate. So phase two have two parts, an aerated uh, a pasteurization. Uh, this part one is called aerated steam is introduced into a room and the compost temperature is held at 140 Fahrenheit for a minimum of two hours. In practice, uh, it's done for four to six hours is often used. Room phase two temperature or measure constantly. Pasteurization kill harmful organism like nematode, flies, mites, and fungal pathogen. Temperature much above 140 must be avoided since fungi and antinomycid are inactivated and um, um, ammoniafying bacteria are stimulated. Because phase two is an aerobic fermentation process, fresh air is essential. There are slight variation uh, uh, to this uh, pasteurization. For example, some forms utilize a peak heat of 150 Fahrenheit, drop temperature in 2 degree increment. Uh, steam isn't utilized by all grower, but must be introduced if temperature don't rise by themselves. In some farm, the use of bulk tunnels for phase 2. Uh, no steam is added, uh, so it's self pasteurization, but they must have an active compost. In one Dutch system in California, phase two tunnel temperature of 140 for eight hour or employee. The disadvantage of phase two tunnel include is too much emphasis on the compost taking off quickly. It limits fuel since tunnel can be enlarged and require more sanitation. The advantage include consistency of end product, better control of moisture and low uh, and cost of saving. At some farm, spawn run is done in an adjacent room. So pasteurization is right here, this step. So phase two is called conditioning. So conditioning is to remove almost all ammonia from the compost. The temperature of the compost is gradually lower from 140 to 115 Fahrenheit, decreasing temperature five degree each day for five to six days. These temperature favor the ammonifying atenomycete and fungi. Temperature are held at 122 Fahrenheit or slightly lower if necessary until all trace of ammonia are gone. During conditioning, the ammonia is converted into microbial protein. Level of ammonia should be between 100 parts per million prior to spawning. Since ammonia is problematic for most fungi, including the button mushroom. So right here is conditioning, uh, slowly lowering the temperature. So peak microbial activity uh, normally occurs 24 to 48 hours after pasteurization has begun. As the food supply diminish, activity of the compost temperature drops. During conditioning, the compost become well flecked with whitish atenomycetes on the surface uh, and then other fungi as well. Once ammonia is gone, the temperature of the compost is dropped to spawning temperature uh, of 76 to 80 uh, Fahrenheit room temperature. So in phase two, microorganisms convert ammonia and nitrate to protein, causing a change in the compost from alkaline to near neutrality at spawning. The production of protein con- cons- conserved nitrogen, giving an apparent increase in increase of nitrogen in the compost as a function of dry weight. At excessively long period above 140 Fahrenheit, too many microorganisms, especially those that lower ammonia are killed. In addition, the selectivity of the compost may be destroyed. The loss of selectivity is probably associated with the death of microbial cell and subsequent release of nutrient can support 
the growth of other organisms. It also been suggested that selectivity of mushroom compost is connected with the existence of an intact but dormant biomass. So a finished compost, so you, after you finish phase one and phase two, uh, you know, a finished compost has the following characteristic. So up to 30% of the dry weight of the raw material went into making the compost is consumed during phase one. Another 20% is consumed during phase two. In other words, a total of 50% of the dry weight of the straw and supplement is gone. Where, you might ask? Into the air as carbon dioxide. Remember the end result of composting organic matter is heat, water, and carbon dioxide. A finished compost, a finished compost uh, also have this other characteristics. Uh, the ammonia odor is gone, so it's, or less than 10 parts per million, and it doesn't smell raw. The pH is 7.5. The compost is soft, palatable, and can be sheared easily. When squeezed, the compost holds its form. The moisture content is about 67%. The nitrogen content is 2 to 2.3%. Uh, and the C to N ratio is 70 to 1. Immediately prior to spawning, the ratio of the fungal actinomycete bacteria biomass is about 281. The microbial biomass of compost is approximately 2% of the compost dry weight. A tremendous amount if you think about it. The inoculation of substrate is called spawning. Uh, for button mushroom spawn or compost rate is about 0.5 to 3% of dry weight. Compost is about 6% moisture uh, out of phase two. The water is needed to add to bring the compost to 77% moisture at spawning. Supplement like spawn mate may be added at this time Colonization of the compost must proceed as rapidly as possible to prevent other organisms from, be, from becoming established. The colonization of substrate is called spawn run. Sometimes this is called space, uh, phase three. So in the 1930s, uh, James Sinan uh, from Penn State University took out a patent for green spawn. Today, Millet or rice commonly used in agaricultural production. The small seed can efficiently mix and distribute throughout the compost. Co colonization of the compost must proceed as rapidly as possible to prevent other organisms from becoming established. Relative humidity must be at 90% during spawn run. Carbon dioxide level of uh, basically 10,000 to 15,000 parts per million are beneficial. So walking into a room with those level of carbon dioxide literally takes your breath away. Spawn runs for uh, 12 to 14 days are common, uh, but it can be shortened with super spawn. So spawning uh, with colonized compost. So this is not generally used, however, since it's the risk of spreading contaminant is too high. At spawning, a delay release nutrient uh, oil encapsulated in a denatured protein coat may be added. With supplements such as spawn mate, for example, yield may increase one pound or more per square foot of compost substrate. A grower that targets six to six and a half pound of harvest of mushroom per square foot in order to make a profit. These numbers become available to the growing mushroom over the life of the bed. So these nutrients become available to the growing mushroom over the life of the bed. However, if a farm compost is of highest quality, there may be no economic benefit for adding the supplement. Supplement of, uh, supplementation of the compost became desirable in the 1970s when mecha mecha mechanicalization of the self-growing system was developed. Today's shelf... Uh, Today's shelf today's self spawning machine mixed in supplement in beds 
uh, in Pennsylvania and Dubbo. Before this automated mixer were available, Montferic Pharmacophenia popularized the tray system since a relatively small tray for phase two could be dumped and the spawn and the supplement could be mixed well into the compost before it was returned to the tray. Today, some believe that the tray system is absolute, obsolete uh, since, it, since automated mixer are used for bed. New mushroom farms or remodel farm off, often built Dutch system with aluminum frames, shelf, and conveyor belts power from outside of the growing house. While spawn is produced under the most meticulously adherence to sanitary practice, nothing on a button mushroom is sterile except the spawn. Good sanitation is a must to avoid introduction of pathogen and pests to the substrate. After about two weeks of composting, uh, the button mushroom will not fruit because its hyphae uh, produce a compound that inhibit fruiting. To overcome this self-inhibition, a casing layer is added to the top of the colonized uh, compost. The casing layer is not sterile. So the casing layer provides three things. One, a humid microenvironment for pin development. Two, a water reservoir. Three, microorganism, which breaks down the compound that prevent uh, button mushroom from fruiting. So obviously the casing layer is not sterile. Pasteurized soil will work uh, and was the casing of choice for a long time. But today growers use peat moss with lime. Peat moss is very acidic and must be neutralized with something uh, like lime. Use about five parts peat moss to one part uh, lime by volume. Agaricus by spores prefer a casing pH of 7 to 7.5, which will fall due to uh, acid secreted by the mushroom mycelium as the casing uh, is colonized. Environmental condition after casing should be the same as during spawn running. The peat moss is used straight out of the bag and doesn't normally contain any agaricus pathogen or pest. Although agaricus will not fruit in the absence of microorganism in compost, experimentally it will fruit if activated charcoal is incorporated into the sterile casing layer. The so many growers would tack the casing layer. Uh, so the best uh, they have available since spreading. Okay. Many growers would tack the casing layer. Uh, this mean add colonized compost. Uh, the best they have available since spreading pests at this stage could be disa disa uh, disastrous to the casing. CAC stands for compost at casing, but is used like an actual word on mushroom farm. Instead of using colonized compost in the casing, uh, you can mix colonized grain into the casing. One such product is called Casemate. And the purpose of cacking and adding something a casemate is the same. To shorten the time of the casing layer uh, is colonized by the button mushroom mycelium. Both methods provide point of inoculation uh, in the casing that will grow an anastomosis or fuse with hyphae from substrate. The hyphae in the substrate will eventually reach the top of the casing layer, but it will reach it much faster if the casing layer is already colonized. To use this method, the strain of the button mushroom and the casing layer and the strain in the substrate must be identical. Otherwise, no hypo fusion will take place. To cack, use 0.05 to 0.1 pound of colonized compost per square feet uh, of substrate. So the thickness of the casing layer is about uh, 1 to one. 5.8 to 2 inches. The motion level in a typical peat moss base casing is 70 to 75 or 2 to 4% low saturation. To CAC, use you know, 0 0.505 to 0 0.1 pound of colonized compost per square foot of uh, sub uh, substrate surface. So don't let the casing uh, layer dry out. Uh, within a few days of applying the casing, the mycelium should be growing into the casing layer. 
once my cereal goat is firmly established, the casing is gradually water uh, up to its optimum moisture holding capacity. This, that is, any more water would run out of the casing. Optimum moisture capacity should be achieved at least two days before the mycelium reach the surface. This is accomplished by a series of light watering with a misting nozzle over two to four day period. Water is the water in the casing moved by capillary action to the surface where it's drawn into the air by evaporation. This constant movement slowly depletes the casing of the moisture needed to protect pinhead development. Therefore, in conjunction with optimal casing moisture level, the relative humidity of the room must be held at 95%. Low humidity must be accompanied by light, but a regular watering, so, uh, you know, two to four times daily. Don't let the casing water, uh, casing layer dry out. Watering must not damage the surface of the casing layer and watering must watering bed uh, watering mushroom bed is somewhat an art form you get to do what you get to know what is too wet and what's too dry by experience in a dry casing layer the mycelium is characterized by a lack of rhizomorph and an abundance of fine capillary type mycelia the fine growth can totally permeate, permeate the casing layer, which then become hard, compact, and unreceptive to water. So this is called sealing. A dry casing is also susceptible to overlay or a dense mycelial growth that can cover the casing surface and show little to no inclination to form pinhead. Overlay directly result from a dry casing, high level of CO2, and a low humidity. In contrast, the mycelium grow coarse In contrast, the mycelium grow coarse and stringy in a saturated compost, also resulting in poor growth. Scratching uh, the top of the casing with is what is described as a large hole made of nail or something similar may repair the casing surface. Some growers scratch the casing as a matter of routine. Pinning. At this point, visible mycelial growth in the valley of the casing layer should be uh, consists of rhizomorphic, which are thick strand of hyphae. Rhizomorphic growth is important because it's the origin of mushroom pins, primordia or pinhead uh, or knots of mycelium that precede the development up into small mushrooms. All species of mushroom require a set of environment conditions for pinning that are different uh, from the condition for optimal mycelial growth. Most cultivated mushroom fruit a lower temperature than an optimal for growth of mycelium. Usually a drop in temperature is a natural environment. Uh, in a natural environment, it's accompanied by rain to increase the humidity. To initiate pinhead formation, substrate temperature or lower, humidity is maintained at 95% and carbon dioxide is reduced. Uh, this is called uh, the air splash. In button mushroom, uh, the mycelium is stimulated to fruit by decreasing CO2 level to below 100,000 part per million and reducing compost temperature to about 63% Fahrenheit which means air temperature might be, uh, might, ha might have to be three to, uh, three to 8% cooler. Flushing of the air is started about six days after the casing, uh, uh, if, if the casing was cacked or up to 12 days if it was not. Cropping. So the mushroom crop grow in cycle called flush or break. A break occur in roughly seven, 10 days interval. Some fresh air is continuously introduced into the growing womb uh, since high level of CO2 uh, cause long stem and underdeveloped cap. Uh, other mushrooms produce similar abnormal growth in these conditions. 
CO2 level may be slightly raised depending on the strain under cultivation for the enlargement uh, uh, of the first break and the remaining of the cropping. During the first break, do not water on successive day. Unlike most mushrooms, the button mushroom does not need light for proper development, so it's often grown in the dark. It'd be a waste of money to keep the light on. Button mushroom are picked before the uh, before the veal breaks uh, and the stem elongate. Portobello, which are grown as above, except that fewer pins are produced by thinning and providing less optimal condition for pinning. The first three breaks are harvestable. After that, uh, the risk of uh, building up pests is too great, uh, so they are not really harvested after uh, three breaks. So after cropping, uh, the spent compost in the production room may be steamed for several hours uh, at temperature up to 160 Fahrenheit to kill fly larvae and other pests. This is called cooked out. Uh, the spent compost is then hauled away and used uh, as organic matters in agriculture field. It can be used uh, in soilless soil mixture, but the salt must be leached. The level of calcium oxalate uh, salt are high. So at this stage, Aspergillus uh, fumig fumigatus is dormant fungus uh, in the spent compound compost. Uh, and it may play a role in in uh, allergic reaction, so uh, people usually call this uh, mushroom worker lung. So we just went over this whole uh, button mushroom production. So you have composting, you have phase one. So it's primar uh, primarily done by uh, thermophilic bacteria and some fungi. Generally, does uh, generally this is done outdoor, although more and more indoor uh, operation or, 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 or being developed or used. Then you move to phase two, so final indoor composting in wooden tray, bed, metal, uh, shelf, and box in tunnels. So you have more control uh, composting, primarily the thermophilics and actinomycetes and fungi uh, remove uh, ammonia. Hash ratios from compost during this phase two is to eliminate pests. Then you want to go to spawning. Spawning is the addition of mushroom mycelium to the compost. Spawn is the vegetative mycelial growth uh, on grains. So in this case, it's millet or rye. Spawns run is the mycelial colonization of the compost. And then you have casing. You add roughly one to one five eight inches layer of peat moss and lime added to the top. Mycelium colonization, uh, my mycelium colonized the casing layer uh, to reach the surface uniformly. The process is accelerated by the uh, use of spawn casing. Next, you have pinning uh, mushroom bed kept at 63% Fahrenheit. Uh, air temperature must be cooler, uh, so it's 55 to 60. Uh, room CO2 level have been dropped to less than a thousand part uh, per million. And then finally, you have harvest. Mushroom produced in breaks with several days of uh, picking between each of the breaks. Four to five breaks in a 30 day uh, harvesting, period, harving, harvesting period is common. Most mushroom farm pick only three breaks in order to reduce the contamination. With that, Thank you.